Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, three, three men face charges in connection to an assault on New Year's Eve. Texas authorities lay down more razor wire even after the Supreme Court's ruling. And road closures are in effect in some Texas cities, all due to the heavy rains moving across the state. Well, obviously, the uh, rain today is exacerbating our problem with flooded areas, and we're going to be dealing with that for the next few days. Tonight, we have another line of storms coming through uh, after midnight, and then by tomorrow, it does start pulling out of the area, so we've got improving conditions, and we'll be talking about that coming up in a moment. Stay tuned. And one local talent staying local. I'll have that in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. This is an alert day. More rain and more flooding in the Crossroads area. So let's toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Well, thank you very much. Obviously, folks, a lot of people were inconvenienced by the water flowing across low water crossings and we're going to have that problem again tomorrow morning but that should be the last of it okay right about now there is a city you can see a cup the shower activity that moved through earlier today right now we do have a pretty heavy storm uh, down there in sea drift that's going to be going up uh, through calhoun county this hour so just watch out for that but then we have a little clearing between here and here and then that one comes in after midnight for more rain we had another two inches today on top of the four that we had on Monday. So we're getting pretty soggy around here and we'll be looking at the rivers rising over the next few days. And we'll talk all about that and plan your weekend out coming up in just a few minutes. So we'll toss it back to you, Karina. Mac, thank you. This morning, the Gonzalez Fire Department asked for help from the Nixon and Smiley Fire Departments to help a victim who was swept off the roadway due to floodwaters. You can see the semi truck jackknifed and went into floodwaters. With the help of a water rescue boat, emergency workers rescued the man and got him to safe ground. No one was hurt. The National Weather Service issued river flood warnings posted for the crossroads in Lavanca County. A river flood warning in effect until early Friday afternoon for the Navidad River at Sublime. The river will rise to 30.6 feet Thursday morning. Flood stage is 24 feet. In DeWitt County, a river flood warning in effect until early Saturday afternoon for the Guadalupe River at Cuero. The river is expected to rise above the flood stage Thursday morning before cresting at 26.9 feet early Friday morning. Here in Victoria, two river flood warnings will start Thursday. A river flood warning goes into effect Thursday afternoon until Monday morning for the Guadalupe River at Victoria. The river is expected to rise above flood stage early Thursday afternoon to a crest of 27.7 feet early Saturday morning. Flood stage is at 21 feet. A river flood warning goes into effect Thursday evening until further notice for the Guadalupe River at Bloomington. The river is expected to rise above flood stage Thursday evening and continue rising to a crest of 26.2 feet Saturday evening. Flood stage is 20 feet. As the heavy rain continues and flash flood warnings are issued in many parts of the state, Texas State <coughs> Emergency Authorities and weather experts are advising drivers to turn around, don't drown. They say if you come across a water-covered roadway, find another route, no matter if you're driving a small car or a big truck. Now, this is what one resident in Inez is dealing with. Glenn Zantotini says he's lived in the 300 block of Miller Road since 1969, but says recently it seems his property floods more during a rain event. We reached out to Victoria County Commissioner Kenneth Sexton, who says he'll look into the area and provide help if he can. 25 News Now Week in Anchor Adam Seibel will take a closer look at this issue tonight on 25 News Now at 10. So here is your rear poll this evening. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, do you feel like flooding in your area has gotten worse over the years? Yes, no, or about the same. According to our results, it looks like 73% stand at no, and that's the one that leads tonight. We want to keep on hearing your opinion. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 10. Three men were taken into custody by Lavaca County Sheriff's deputies in the Austin area Tuesday. 23-year-old Miguel Mendiola and 34-year-old Enrique Mendiola face aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury charges. 20-year-old Jesus Mendiola was arrested on a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All three suspects are also on an immigration detainer. This is connected to an assault on New Year's Eve at a home near Moulton. The victim was beaten and stabbed, suffering cuts to his chest, stomach, ribs, and hand. He also suffered a head injury from being struck with a blunt object. Those three suspects are in the Lawaka County Jail in lieu of $75,000 bond each. Authorities say the case is still under investigation. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden extended an invitation to attend the President's State of the Union address to Kate Cox, a Texas woman who sued Texas and lost over the ability to receive an abortion. The 31-year-old Texas mother was pregnant with her third child when she learned the baby had a rare genetic disorder where the baby would die after a week. She sued over the right to have an abortion but lost when the judges stated there was not enough evidence to prove her life was in danger. Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris and their spouses on Tuesday <coughs> centered their first major campaign rally of the election on abortion rights. Now, Governor Greg Abbott continues to install razor wire in Eagle Pass today. He took to social media saying, quote, Texas razor wire is effective against the illegal border crossings encouraged by Biden's open border policies, unquote. This comes after the Supreme Court ruled that federal border patrol agents can cut through the wire if needed. But Abbott has since doubled down on placing additional razor wire in the area. The DOJ also threatened to sue Texas if it allows state authorities to arrest and prosecute illegal migrants who cross the border illegally and give local judges the authority to expel them. That law is set to take place in March. A North Texas congressman is introducing a bill that would give to Texas more control over the border. KXAS reports Congressman Roger Williams' new bill called the State of Texas Operational Protections Act would authorize Texas to enforce their southern border and be reimbursed from the federal government for doing so. Williams introduced the bill on Monday. In the last year, thousands of newly arrived migrant students have enrolled at Colorado public schools in cities where migrant families are typically bused to. Students and school administrators have had to adjust to the sudden changes by adding resources to help students with their new surroundings. Eyes. Uh, Voices. Uh, Inside Bryant-Webster. I want everybody going to not letter A in your workbooks. Alex everybody Nelson's fourth grade class starts on subtraction. We have 3,601 minus 589. What's in the ones place? But this year, what do we need? Their school has been more focused on addition, particularly migrant children. Uh, the vast majority of them are coming from Venezuela. Uh, their stories are remarkable. Principal Brian Clark says throughout the year, the number of new students has actually multiplied. So when we first came, it was really exciting to see like, oh, we have like 20, we have 30 new students. And then as it became 40, 50, 60, 80, 90 new students, then it was a little more like, okay, now what are we gonna do? At this bilingual school, for most kids, class is taught in both English and Spanish. Aquí, excelente. Helping new students feel at home. I think a lot of families really appreciate that their students are able to do learning without having to try and figure out English all day. So that's been really nice. You know, they also really do want their children to learn English so that they can, you know, participate in everything that they need to hear. And like their new students, teachers and staff are adjusting too. They're translating their lesson plans and their curriculum materials. They're making sure that they're meeting their students' needs even if they don't speak Spanish fluently. For some, the journey to Denver can be traumatic, so school can be a safe haven. Luckily, we have an excellent mental health team here who's really stepped up and formed support groups for students who have experienced similar traumas in their process in arriving here. O también oído. Everybody repeat, oído. oído. Halfway through the school year, Clark says the flow of new students hasn't slowed. I would say maybe about five students a week. So they're borrowing desks and rearranging furniture around DPS to make it work. We are preparing to, you know, fill every seat in the building. That can make planning for next year tricky. It's hard to know exactly how many students we're going to have. ¿Puedes poner esto? So the staff at Bryant-Webster are ready to keep adjusting to ensure every new addition feels at home. Even though it's been hard for everybody, they're rising to the occasion, and that's been awesome. One person get a Chromebook. Go! Early voting for City of Victoria Mayor runs through January 30th. Early voting is at the Dr. Patty Dutson Public Health Center, 2805 North Navarro, Classroom A. You can vote this week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on January 29th and 30th. You can vote from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.
On the ballot, Peter Brown, Carissa Witters, Josephine Solis, Dwayne Crocker, Jacob Sauceda, and Bob Constantine. Join us Saturday, February 3rd for complete coverage of the special mayoral election. For any residents who have an interest in getting involved with Victoria's government, you can apply to run for City Council. Residents can run for any of the four regular City Council District 1, 2, 3, and 4 seats. An informational session about the roles of City Council members will be held on February 6th at 10 a.m. at the City Council Chambers. That's on 107 West, uh, West Juan Lin Drive. The uh, election is set for May 4th. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave. The Calhoun County ISD Police Department is investigating an accidental discharge of a weapon that happened during a security or rather a safety check. No one was injured and a man is facing a 15 year sentence by a Jackson County judge for the online solicitation of a minor. Plus, Calhoun High School's theater director awarded with the Texas Thespians Hall of Fame Green Apple Leadership Award. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us. There's new changes when it comes to filing your 2023 taxes. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, how this could add more money to your wallet. Also ahead, Texas' highest criminal court declines to intervene in the securities fraud case against Attorney General Ken Paxton. The details this evening. President Donald Trump has taken a big step forward to winning a third Republican presidential nomination, securing the New Hampshire primary. His victory was a blow to former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, but she has vowed to stay in the race. On the trail in Virginia Tuesday, President Biden said he is ready to take on Trump. He received an endorsement from the United Auto Workers today as he addressed the union in Washington. Biden plans to sway blue-collar workers his way in critical auto-making swing states like Michigan and Wisconsin. Texas highest criminal court on Wednesday declined to intervene in the battle over the prosecutor's pay in the securities fraud case against Attorney General Ken Paxton. The Texas Tribune reports after a trial court judge ordered Collin County to approve back pay to the prosecutors in November. The prosecutors asked the Court of Criminal Appeals to force the county to pay them. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals said Wednesday it would not take up the issue. Tax day will be here before you know it, and there are some big changes this year. And for many, this could mean more money in your wallet. You may be receiving your W-2 form soon if you haven't already. And while the tax deadline is still a few months away, tax experts recommend filing your taxes early. Get your taxes in. As you begin to fill out your 2023 taxes, you may notice some differences. The IRS made several changes to the income tax brackets to help adjust for inflation. They adjust certain tax benefits every year, but for tax year 2023 is the most they've been adjusted up in decades. This means you may end up with a bigger refund. Here's why. In 2022, a person filing as single 
earning between $41,766 to $89,075 paid 22% of their income to the IRS. In 2023, though, that tax bracket jumped to $44,726 to $95,375. That's a 7% change. Other changes, the amount of money you can claim in energy credits. We always had the electric vehicle credit for up to $7,500. But there's also a credit for used electric vehicles now up to $4,000. If you've made energy efficient improvements to your home, like installing new windows, you can also claim up to $1,200 in credits with no lifetime limits instead of 500, which is what it was previously. There's also changes in tax credits for families. If you're a family with three kids, it's $7,430. So how much money can you expect to receive back? Last year, the IRS is the average Average refund was $3,039, but with the tax bracket changes, you can expect more. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. If you do qualify for a refund, you will receive that money within six to eight weeks, but the IRS says it will be even sooner if you choose direct deposit. Here's a look at some of the top headlines you'll re find in the Quero record. Stacy Love announced his candidacy for County Commission Precinct 1, and David Guajardo is hired as general manager for the Drainage District. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Well, good evening, everybody. Right now we're at 62 degrees. The rain is settling down, but it's not over with just yet. We've got another round of storms later tonight. Today's high was only 68, 461 the low. Not exactly winter uh, or January like temperatures, but that's what we got. We got an additional 1.72 uh, out at the airport at Riverside Park. I believe it was 2.43, so another two inches around the area. And if we get another two inches tonight, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow morning? We're probably going to be seeing a little bit more flooding, so we need to be cautious in the morning. But I do have good news. Things are going to settle down by the time we get to the weekend, and we'll have all that coming up in just a moment. Well, another uh, soggy day out there, a lot of rain that we had this morning. And of course, at this hour, we're getting a much needed little break. You can see how most of the stormy weather is actually pulling up into East Texas. So Houston's going to be under the gun tonight. We're going to get about four or five hours of a break. OK, I mean, between here and here, you can see uh, Eagle Pass uh, right about there. You can see how the next big cluster of storms beginning to develop, develop down south, and that's going to be rolling over our area again tonight. So sometime after midnight, expect for another round of storms. And uh, the good news that it's the last one. After that, we start clearing up. But the bad news is that we're probably going to see a little bit more flooding because now we're completely saturated. Uh, we, of course, uh, let me do the close-up view. Here's a, 
uh, Port Lavaca, you can see right there, the biggest clusters uh, are down south, right there along the coast, coming right up uh, Calhoun and, and headed up toward Matagorda. So if you're out there along the coastal areas, you're gonna be looking at that. For us in the city, we seem to be doing okay. We've got the clouds and even Goliad is clearing up at this hour. However, it is not, uh, as I mentioned, completely over. But whatever pause we get in the activity right now is good because we need to get the water to drain off. There is uh, Victoria. You can see the blues and the purples, okay? So let's look at the scale. In the uh, blues and purples, we start getting in the two to three inch range. And when you start getting into the reds, which is in Gonzales, uh, they're looking at five to six inches of rainfall that fell last night. A lot of that was, uh, I don't know, somewhere about 10 o'clock. It was really heavy, rolling all the way up, and the entire cluster all the way up to maybe uh, the LaGrange area, where they had uh, some flooding overnight as well. So again, that's our big concern, flooding for the next, prob uh, next couple of days. Even here, this is the Guadalupe River right here in Victoria. Um, as Don was talking about, it's, going, it's at flood stage now, but then it's going to roll up to about 27.5 feet. Now, at 27, uh, we get water in uh, Riverside Park, up uh, maybe even, the, I don't know, the, the new duck ponds maybe, up into that area. So for those of you who use the park a lot, golfers and all that, you just need to watch because uh, this would be uh, today, this would be tomorrow, this would be the weekend, the water's going to be high up there. Those of you in um, Bloomington also, of course, the river's a little bit farther away, but low-lying spots will be taking up a lot of water. Now we have all kinds of watches and warnings. In the dark green is the watch, in other words, be cautious. In the green, that means that uh, you are getting flooding right now. So as you can see, Victoria here, uh, Cuero, Gonzalez, all the way up into uh, Fayette County as well. And that's gonna continue through tomorrow afternoon. Then I think a lot of this is gonna settle down as we get to the weekend. Now watch this. This is uh, tonight, Wednesday. You can see how the big uh, cluster is now rolling east, but you see the next one coming in. Um, there we go. At midnight tonight, the stormy weather will be rolling past San Antonio, and the southern end of it will get very close to our area. So some of you will see more thunder and lightning tonight. And then we go into Thursday morning, and then by Thursday afternoon, watch this. This is going to be good. You're going to like this one. Okay, boom. Hey, clearing skies, all right. Then the stormy weather pulls out. Then we get a nice dry north wind. And all of a sudden we get a little bit of a break in all this sogginess. And then when the weekend rolls around, well, it gets really nice. I'll tell you why, because we're gonna get another cool front coming through. So cloudy in the morning, clearing up, sunny in the afternoon. Thunder showers overnight, cloudy in the morning, clearing up in the afternoon. Temperature's still on the mild side, and here we go. We are looking, well, that's our front tonight. It's not really a front, but that's the storm line coming in. Clearing tomorrow, better on Friday, even better on Saturday, with a nice northwest wind that's going to actually cool us down to more realistic uh, January temperatures. That's your seven-day forecast. Uh, we do re want to remind you, we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's sports reporter Zach Brown. We get some more scores from around the area last night and a star out on the diamond not going anywhere. I'll have that in sports.
The UHV Jaguars added another name to their impressive recruiting class, and they are keeping local talent right here in Victoria. Out of Victoria East, Xavier Ortega officially became a commit of the defending Red River Athletic Conference champ. He was able to make this official, surrounded by his teammates and family. Even his 96-year-old great-grandfather was there in attendance to witness Ortega put the pen to paper. Ortega had this dream of playing at the next level for years. No better place to do it than home. I mean, I've been playing here ever since I was born, and I've been playing here on the varsity level since I was a freshman, so it's going to mean everything to play there for another four years and be able to embrace the history of that stadium. And being able to play in front of everybody, my friends, my family, my teammates that I've known for ever since I was four years old, you know, it means everything. We've got some local guys already on the team, and Xavier's going to fit right in. And, uh, you know, we expect great things. Once he gets in our program and everything along those lines, we expect good things from Xavier. The Jags actually getting ready to hit the field this Saturday and Sunday at Riverside Stadium. Ortega's going to have to wait another year, his senior season, with Victoria East right around the corner. District play underway in soccer. The West girls looking to go 2-0, getting Veterans Memorial. They do just that. They win by a score of 4-1. Mia Ramirez had all four goals, but she couldn't do it alone. Kennedy Blau had two assists. The other two came off the legs of Abby Adcock and Ava Gonzalez. Mia Fonseca shut the door in the net. The East Titans ladies, they lose a tough one by one goal, 3-2, to two, but this game was non-district. They have about a week before that begins for them when they get Gregory Portland. The Calhoun Sand Crabs hope for this to be a very good year. Nearly making it to state last year started off district play with a 10-0 shutout performance against Rice Consolidated. Busy night out on the hardwood last night. Some other teams we couldn't quite get to. The Yoakum Bulldogs got a very important win over Columbus, they are just one game back of Edna and Rice, who are tied for first place. Yoakum will get Hallettsville, who just knocked off Rice Consolidated last night. Out in the roost, the girls in Quero handle business yet again. They make easy work of Fox Tech winning streak. Now sits at 17 games. Arissa Carbonara had 25 points. She just recently reached the 1,000 point mark in a Quero jersey. Games like this or why she was able to do so. The Palacios girls get their second district win, knocking off Industrial by a score of 50 to 32. Palacios does have a winning record overall at 18 and 11, but they're trying to climb in the district standings. And Jim Harbaugh is reportedly going to be the next head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. That's it for your sports. Donna Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach. We're going to be back in a moment. A beloved hippo at the Cincinnati Zoo is having her seventh birthday. Finally tonight, a big day today for one of the Cincinnati Zoo's most famous and beloved residents. Time to celebrate with a cake and other treats as Fiona the Hippo <laughs> turns seven today. 
Back in 2017, <laughs> Fiona was born six weeks premature, weighing only 29 pounds. <laughs> But now, she is seven years old and thriving. Now, at her age, Fiona is approaching hippo adulthood and now weighs more than 2,400 pounds. Wow. She looks so smooth. I just want to... Yes. That opening her. shot was majestic, And there was man. the cake. <laughs> Coming up, yeah. <laughs> and there goes the cake. Yeah, there it is. Oh, good for it, her. Yeah, way to go. All right. She's, what a big she's girl. rebounded well, yes. <laughs> Well, the big story, of course, has been the flooding. Yep. And one sure. thing that you've stressed, I know, on the air is if people are driving up and they see a barricade, don't drive around the barricade. Yeah. That's well, the why four, it's there. What are the four words? Don't drive, don't drown. <laughs> That's don't right. Okay. Turn around, don't oh, drown. Okay. Oh, don't yeah. drown. All, oh, of that, all of that, it makes sense. Don't drink yes. and drive is another one. That's too. right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, turn around, don't drown. Of course, I, I'll four. thank you for pulling that up. You know, well, okay. I've done uh, stories on where, you know, how much water will float your car and it's really the answer is 12 inches uh, on some pickup trucks you know two feet will float your car that's an 18 wheeler with a tanker mm. and that got rolled over uh, in the uh, flooding there yeah. so what makes you think you're so tough think oh. about it tomorrow morning we are probably at maximum flood stage but then the afternoon things are going to clear up and we're looking better weather for the weekend thank you Mike thanks for joining us we'll see you back here tonight for 25 news now at 10.